This behind me is the new Volkswagen Golf. It's good, better, the best, the segment leader, benchmark, subscribe, press the notification bell, and I'll see you next week. Okay, there is a bit more to it, so stick around and subscribe. I'm waiting. Mm -hmm. Now the notification bell. And turn on mobile notifications on your device. Yes? Okay, thank you. Let's go. In its more than 45-year history, the Golf has often left car journalists and customers scratching their heads while looking for differences in what was supposed to be a new model. In case of the Golf, it's relatively easy to tell Mark II from Mark III, but Mark III and Mark IV, or Mark IV and Mark V, are a quiet bit more similar. This is what we call an evolution, not a revolution. In case of the Mark 7 and Mark 8 Golfs, it's also hard to tell the difference because the cars are almost identical in size. The new Golf is 3 cm longer and it has a more falling roofline in the back. And what's of the paramount importance, the front is flatter and slightly lower. These changes, among others, have led to improving the drag coefficient from 0.3 to 0.275. Better aerodynamic properties mean better fuel economy. Anything else? Well, this is a Golf. Look closer and you will spot the new IQ lights in the front and in the back, new Volkswagen logo and a model badge running across the tailgate. That's pretty much it. This is a Golf, not a Gerhard Richter painting that you'd want to spend time admiring. The most important changes are visible from behind the wheel. There are no more analog instruments. Now all Golfs get a digital display, albeit in some markets the base model display may not be configurable. The dashboard starts with a touch panel on the left side of the steering wheel. On this panel there are the usual light controls, as well as the less usual rear window defroster and the windscreen demister. On a rainy morning it took me a while to find these two. On the virtual cluster, you can set the general theme as well as some additional information which can appear on the sides. Nothing particularly complicated, but if you want to have analog dials, you'll have to look elsewhere. And you'd have to do it rather quickly, because in a couple of years there may not be analog instruments anymore. On the right side of the steering wheel is the InnoVision cockpit infotainment system. It is slightly tilted towards the driver. Depending on the market, InnoVision cockpit may be standard or you may get a smaller infotainment display with two knobs, presumably for volume and tuning. The InnoVision cockpit interface resembles flipped iOS. Uh, on the driver's side there is the virtual home button. In the middle there are some apps swipe and you get a screen with selected apps and then you get sort of status settings things which doesn't seem to work all the time anyway uh, it seems logical at first but my first few hours with the car were difficult and i was swearing profusely why well for example in polish the keyboard is set to the german layout quartz the only way to get to QWERTY is to switch to English. Volkswagen did not get back to me with a solution. I suspect it's something that one day will be fixed in an update. But switching from a Slavic language to English or one of the other few support languages means I can ask Volkswagen to raise the temperature. No problem. It will get warmer at the front left shortly. Or I can ask Volkswagen to um, find the nearest petrol station. Search for petrol station nearby. Ultimately, more languages will be supported unofficially, possibly maybe in 2021. It may come in the form of a software update. 
Volkswagen even boasts you will be able to retrofit certain options like adaptive cruise control, adaptive headlights, sat-nav or smartphone integration as software updates. As far as the InnoVision cockpit is concerned, at the bottom of the screen there is a touch panel to adjust the temperature and the volume. Lower between the air vents there is another touch panel with one-step access to driver aids, climate control settings, automatic parking and drive modes. And the only physical button, besides those on the steering wheel, the hazard lights. I can set the screen to play an audible sound when I press it, but there is no feedback on these panels here whatsoever. So I have to take my eyes off the road and the road better be smooth because it's difficult to aim. The central display and the lights panel are very similar to what I saw during the static presentation of the electric ID3 model. The ID3 also had touch buttons on the steering wheel, something that may be available on some higher trim golfs depending on the market. I don't know if I like this unification. I was hoping the ID line would be unique, but then you need to have something similar across the range so as not to discourage switching models within the brand. What Volkswagen did with the Golf's cockpit is, in itself, a revolution. And victims of this revolution will be our wrists and elbows. Lifting the display to the top of the dash means dropping the air vents, like in the new Touareg, the ID3 and now the new Golf. For six months in a year, you're going to have cold air blowing on your wrist and elbow. Further changes are visible in cars with automatic transmission. Here, Volkswagen used this small selector nipple thing, which you may have seen in another one of my reviews. Any ideas which one? Drop me a comment below and I'll tell you in a minute. In the automatic version, probably thinking about aesthetics, the starter button is rectangular and it is placed above the park button. Next is the gear selector, then the parking brake, then the auto hold button. Unlike in the Japanese and Korean cars, here the auto hold function stays on even after you restart the car. There is also a little slot in which I keep my disinfectant gel, which Volkswagen was nice to leave for me. There is also a place for your phone with an induction charger, two USB-C ports. The glove box is medium size, but storage under the armrest is tiny. Cup holders are a step backwards, as only one holds the drink properly and in the other one the cup is likely to wobble. On the plus side, the door pockets are big and lined with soft material, so that items inside don't rattle. I know other car makers do that as well these days, but only after car journalists praised Volkswagen for it for years. Okay, in which one of my reviews did you see a gear selector like this? It was Porsche 911, maybe in the Porsche it was slightly longer than in the Golf. I wonder what would Dr. Freud have to say about this. Depending on the market, the Golf may be available with a 3-cylinder 1-liter engine, 90 or 110 horsepower, a 1.5-liter TSI Evo, 130 or 150 horsepower. The latter comes with 7-speed DSG only and a micro-hybrid. And there are also 2-liter diesels, 115 and 150 horsepower. At a later date, Volkswagen promises more ETSI microhybrids, as well as two plug-in hybrids, 200 and 240 horsepower. Under the bonnet of this test car is a 150 horsepower ETSI mild hybrid. How does it work and what does it do? Volkswagen is using a 48 volt installation which allows for fast recuperation during braking. Energy is stored in a separate battery and then it is used to power the 12 volt installation as well as the 48 volt belt starter and generator. This belt starter and generator is also an alternator and a starter while operating a small electric motor that boosts torque when moving off. It also allows the engine to be turned off for a while when the car is moving and it is almost most unnoticeable to the driver. 
All this is supposed to yield a 10% reduction in emissions and fuel consumption. In the WLTP combined cycle, the new Golf should use about 5.7 liters per 100 kilometers. That's almost 50 Imperial MPG or 41 US. In my test, the car used a bit more, so 42 Imperial or 35 US MPG. I was in normal mode for most of the time, so there is potential to improve this result driving in eco mode. However, I will admit the mild hybrid system operation is transparent to me as a driver. I can see on the display that the engine is shutting off and turning on back again, but I can't feel it. I do feel, however, Volkswagen has improved the suspension and the steering. The Golf never had a bad suspension, but this one evens out the bumps even better and the car is even more glued to the road. As far as the steering is concerned, in recent years all VW cars had very light steering. This one is a bit heavier, it gives you a better feel of what's going on in the corners. Also the fact this car comes with electronic diff as standard means it handles better in the bends. My test car was equipped with the Travel Assist package, which includes active cruise control with stop and go function, lane assist, lane change assist, parking assist. There is also traffic sign recognition and the car suggests when I should take my foot off the gas, because there is a speed limit or a crossing ahead. It can also slow down for some tighter corners. This semi-autonomous driving is all very well implemented and it works naturally with me rather than against me. The Japanese can't match it, but if you don't like it, you can turn it all off. The new Golf with the 1.5 ETSI engine is relatively quick, especially in sports mode. By the way, the mode icon is hard to see in the corner of the screen. At first I thought the sport mode checker flag was something to do with satnav destination. Also around 90, maybe 100 km per hour, I start hearing some wind noise around the wing mirrors. It's annoying because otherwise the Golf is pretty well soundproofed. In the back it's pretty much the same car, there is an armrest with cup holders and a ski hatch. Door pockets are large, there is third zone climate control, air vents of course, new are the USB-C ports and pockets on top of the seats, something like I saw in the ID3. The boot is also the same, 380 liters, there are two shopping bag hooks, a 12 volt socket, you can lower the floor, there is a mini spare underneath it, probably an option in some markets. Once the floor is dropped, it slants upwards towards the back seat so you can slide heavier items. If you need to take the spare tire out, the floor stays open rather than hit you in the head. And you can store the parcel shelf underneath it. Volkswagen is all about practicality. Prices of the new Volkswagen Golf start at around 25,600 euro. This test car in style trim with ETSI 1.5 motor costs 32,500 plus options, which adds up to about 40,000 euro in Germany. So come to Poland and buy this for 32 grand. By the way, back in the day, this kind of money bought you a Golf GTI. What can I say? You should have bought the Golf GTI when it was still affordable. And how do you like the new Golf? Let me know in the comment section below. If you like my sarcastic, down-to-earth and possibly mildly amusing car reviews, subscribe and join me every Friday or just click one of the links on the screen. Also, I started a new channel about the gear I use for filming my shoestring budget car reviews. It's called Marek's Gear. Feel free to check it out as well. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.